one thing that I have come to realize is that burnout usually occurs for a number of reasons. You know, in the 1970s, you know, the average city person was exposed to like what, 500, 500 to 2000 ad messages in, in a day, but only in 2006, it was 3000 to 5000. Now we're in 2024 now and adverts are subconsciously, you are wanting more. Subconsciously, you are feeling entitled to more. That story's mad. He lost all of his assets and all of his family members in one day. And his response was, that's not extreme. That's not radical. It's right. The ways of trying to combat entitlement start from the inside. And so here I wrote, it's funny because a lot of people use that scripture out of context, right? Where they say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But Paul was talking about this thing on. Okay. Q exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey family, welcome back to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Um, I am your host, Iman the Messenger. Sorry, I'm just adjusting myself um how are you today how are you doing um let me know if you're eating something whilst watching this what are you eating uh let me know how your week's gone so far um let me know if you need prayer you know comment down below any prayer requests that you may have um and i will be sure to engage i'll be i'll be sure to say a word of prayer for you um regarding whatever it is but yeah um yeah man today we are going to speak about um entitlement and promotion so um how this kind of came about is um i don't know i was just thinking recently about the kind of generation that we're in now Um, And just how the generation that we're in now is like, it's very interesting, (laughs) very interesting. Um, I think there is, you know, there's a lot of entitlement. There's a lot of, um, uh, what's this word called? A lot of acquisition. um, And people really feel like they deserve a lot of things in life, right? And having less than what you feel like you deserve is like it's like an atrocity you know um it's as if you know the world is against you (laughs) or something like that um and i feel like as a generation we do lack a lot of resilience especially compared to um the older generations that went before us um in in their endeavors right you know we see our moms and our dads that they worked super hard to get us to the points that we're at and yeah you know a lot of that has to do with the structures a lot of that has to do with the um the economics of the world as well like the crisis that we're in at the moment and just different things but um yeah i really felt convicted to talk today um about entitlement and uh, promotion because i think as uh, unboxed called in creative people we have to know how to navigate that right in the world especially with the creative projects that we we do uh the work that we do um our callings maybe some of us are in ministry and different things like that trying to make sure that we don't we don't abide by what's happening in the world but we continue to abide by what the word of god says 
right? And the principles of the word. So that in every single generation, um, those of us who are unboxed, called and creative can always be the blueprint uh, that God needs us to be um, in the world. So um, let's get into it, man. Like today is going to be a lot of reading, a lot of reading. So guys, get your thinking hats on. It's going to be a lot of information, um, some statistics, um, a lot of scripture. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be a good time. So uh, let's do this. So the anchor script, anchor scripture, sorry, for today um, is um, Luke 7, 31 to 32. And it says this. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They're like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another and say, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a song of mourning and you did not weep. Um, so that's Jesus. Jesus is talking about the, um, the generation, um, about the generation that was before him. And basically what he's saying in this, in this kind of parable is he's saying that um, the generation that he was a part of were very, uh, what's this word called? Very entitled, <laughs> very entitled, very needing of um, affirmation, right? That, hey, like we, we did this thing, um, but you didn't dance. And we're doing this thing, but you didn't do this. And he's more so talking about the Pharisees um, and how they would, um, how they came against John the Baptist, right? The, the, the Pharisees were self-righteous. They thought that what they were doing was enough or what they were doing was uh was perfect you know in the sight of god and so in a sense jesus is just jesus is uh explaining that you know the pharisees they um they essentially were like you know hey like don't you see the way we're dressed don't you see that we observe all these laws don't you see that uh we do this and we do that like but it doesn't seem to bother you like you're not you're not impressed by us in a sense. And obviously Jesus, Jesus knew their hearts, right? Jesus knew that, look, all this external stuff that you're doing, um, that's not who you really are. And so, no, like, <laughs> I'm not impressed. And you aren't entitled to um, me giving you affirmation just because you're doing stuff. I know who you really are, right? I know uh, the sin that is inside of you and I know that um, you're unrepentant from those things. Um, so that that's our anchor scripture, and, and I'll be referring back to that as we kind of go through the podcast um, episode. Let's look at some stats. Let's look at some stats. So uh, the fifth estate says this. One in three millennials have a university degree, and some have a master's, as more and more companies are demanding this for people to get in the door. The standard uh, says Generation Z workers, for example, are often subject to articles about their supposed entitled nature, as one BBC article highlights, whereas other research has shown that Gen Z workers have reported the highest rates of burnout with financial instability among the factors leaving them feeling disenfranchised. Standard again says, according to USA Today, in the 1970s, the average city dweller was exposed to 500 to 2,000 ad messages a day. In 2006, it was 3,000 to 5,000. Goodness knows where we're now up to with the rise of the Facebook feed. <laughs> um, another article says this. This generation has had more brand experiences than everyone before it combined. Brands are no longer special. They are everywhere. And wherever they are, they make big promises to make your life better. Now, for those who don't live in brand world, the best definition of a brand I ever heard is the promise of an experience delivered. The problem is sometimes there's too much promise and not enough delivery. BBC Work Life says this for decades. Uh, the cultural mandate in many Western countries has been hustle hard for your employer and you'll be rewarded. If the striving is for, the job you, is for a job you love, the pay will be satisfaction. 
And if the job involves climbing the rungs of a corporate ladder, the pay will be, well, big bucks. Though, different in motivation, both paths share the same narrative. As a result, work has become an obsession, an identity even, something workers traditionally felt lucky to have. According to uh, 2022 research by workplace training company Talent LM, LMs, sorry, um, 82% of Gen Zers surveyed want mental health days. 77 consider it important that their company diver, um, supports diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. And 74% would opt for either hybrid or totally remote work. After an unsatisfactory salary, burnout, and lack of work-life balance was the number one reason they'd quit. Where work used to be about what employees could offer companies, says Michelle, now it's all about what Gen Zers are expecting from work. So um, that's just a few articles and statistics uh, about the state of our generation, right? The state of our generation, uh, especially when it comes to work, when it comes to, um, and I, I guess for us, maybe it'd be creative work or whatever work you do, right? Um, and how we work and what is satisfactory of the work we're doing, what we're getting out of it, uh, whether it is beneficial to our mental health and uh, all of these buzzwords that we use, right? You know, mental health and all this other stuff. And I thought it would be interesting to read that because it will give a picture um, of what we're talking about going forward, right? A picture of entitlement, um, a picture of what promotion looks like, what is in people's minds as well concerning promotion, um, and how that kind of all ties together. So... A couple of things that I guess I want to point out from the articles that I thought were really interesting um, is two things. It's uh, the whole burnout thing, um, burnout and also um, salary, burnout and salary, or I guess I would say fulfillment, right, in a job. Let's say burnout and fulfillment. One thing that I have come to realize is that burnout usually occurs for a number of reasons one um, one person is overworking themselves or two um, you don't know the purpose as to which you are doing that work and so therefore like you already enter burnout because mentally you are not in what you're doing if that makes sense and I do think that the latter is more true for this generation than the former. I don't think that people are necessarily working themselves into the ground. I think that people have already psyched themselves out mentally because the job isn't stimulating them or because the job isn't giving them the compensation that they feel entitled to. And yeah, like there's loads of reasons, um, even as those articles kind of mentioned, like there's loads of reasons as to why people feel entitled, right? One reason is the rise of the cost of living okay so because of the financial crisis that's happening around the world a lot of people in this generation they are looking for compensation like they're looking to be compensated for what they're doing because they can't it's hard to survive on what companies are paying people at the moment um and so there is that uh but also there is the fact that um, for some people, it's not really a living issue. You know, some people are getting paid a good amount of money uh, to do what they do. But it is the exposure to lifestyle. It's the exposure to all of the things that we have in the West now, you know. That article told us that in, I think it was 1960? No, in the 1970s. You know, the average city person was exposed to, like, what, 500 500 to 2,000 ad messages in in a day. But only in 2006, it was 3,000 to 5,000. 
Now we're in 2024 now and adverts are like everywhere everywhere every single station every single video streaming platform every like billboards shop window like everywhere you go there's advertisements pretty much like everywhere <laughs> so um you know that number is probably doubled now but we're probably getting between six thousand and and ten thousand ad messages per day um and that 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 plays a, a toll on people mentally right subconsciously subconsciously you are wanting more subconsciously you are feeling entitled to more things than than ever before you know and so that is something to uh kind of um pay attention to right um and so why 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 do i why do i say all these things i think essentially you know the core of entitlement it all boils down to sin and i think we have to be just like you know really honest about that as people sin is missing the mark right it is uh being um anything other than whole in god and so when we want for this and we want for that and we want for this um and all of our needs are fulfilled like we do have clothing and we do have food <laughs> so our needs are our needs are fulfilled right you know people can shower people can people have roofs over their heads um when we're striving for things outside of that that is missing the mark that is that is sin when, when we're striving for things outside of that i'm not saying that those things you know um those things in themselves are bad but it's the heart posture right behind these things and um it is it is sin that causes us to be entitled um for these different things so if i just kind of scroll down and look at some other things um when i think about sin i think about us as human beings like i always think i always think back to the beginning right and i'll think about okay what do we really deserve like for real like what are we actually entitled to? Because last time I checked, I didn't create myself. Um, I didn't create any of the resources that are on this earth already that we then turn into different things. Um, you know, even if I look at Adam and Eve, right, in the garden, they didn't do nothing. <laughs> they were just created. And God literally was like, yeah, you guys can eat from any of the trees in the garden when you're hungry, kind of thing. Like, and God even gave them the work to do that. God gave them everything. And in the end of the day, we're just a spin-off from them. We're just branches from them. So God has already given us everything that we're supposed to uh, have. He has given us everything that we need. Um, and so what do we really deserve? Now, if we think about the world in terms of sin and outside of Jesus... Well, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So actually what we do deserve, we, we, we deserve death. We deserve uh, to be wiped from eternity. We, we deserve to be wiped from existence. These, this is what we actually deserve. But it's, it's, an, it's, it's an annoying thing because, because we live in a society that has made up its own standards of uh entitlement we base our entitlement on the people around us we don't base it on god we base it on the people around us so if ben over there says hey like no you're entitled to getting a promotion then that's the standard we're like yeah we're entitled well, you're not you're not really entitled to anything like <laughs> None of us are. But because of the mercy, the goodness, the grace, and the love of God, we are able to have these things. Like we're able to earn these things. I say it with quotation marks, right? In this world of meritocracy. And that is something to be grateful for. Rather than being entitled about or expectant about, it's something to be grateful for. And that heart posture is the heart posture that I believe God wants us to have. 
um as as his people right and so um i'll read this passage from job it says this this is job 1 13 to 22 it says now on the day when his sons and daughters uh, were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the female donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans attacked and took them. They also killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another came and said, the Chaldeans formed three units and made a raid on the camels and took them and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking. Another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job got up, tore his robe and shaved his head. And then he fell to the ground and worshipped. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Despite all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. That story's mad because, <clears throat> excuse me, let me, let me just take a drink. <clears throat> right. <sighs> that, that story's crazy because I can't even imagine anyone in this generation that would have that heart posture with things being taken away from them in such a fashion. He literally lost everything. He lost all of his assets and all of his family members in one day. And his response was, naked I came from my mother's womb. <laughs> naked I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's crazy. But it's right. It's, it's crazy and it's hard to swallow. But it is right. And we would only see that as wrong. And we would only see that as like extreme. Because of the diluted world that we live in. Because we live in a godless world. Whereby we make the rules. And we set the standards. And we set the barometers of entitlement. And the barometers of promotion. And what people deserve and what they don't deserve. And, oh, you deserve this because you did this. and But you don't deserve this because you didn't do this. Like, because we're the ones who do that. We don't see that what Job said was right. That was right. That was, that's not extreme. That's not radical. It's right. It's only seen as extreme or radical because we live in a world that is extremely radical in the other direction <laughs> like it's like a pendulum swing like we're we're all the way over here and god is like all the way over here but god is right god is right you know job is is right we aren't entitled to anything naked we came into this world like like we didn't form ourselves in our mother's wombs we didn't form ourselves it was god who formed us and it was God who knew us and it was God who put us into these bodies and, and um, allowed us to be here, right? And to enjoy the, the earth that he get, he's given us. But um, obviously our own sins and our own things are, are, are the things that really get in the way of what God has for us. And so I wrote this here, you know, I think the ways of trying to combat entitlement start from the inside. And so here I wrote, um, you got to work as if you're working onto the Lord. There's a scripture that says that it says, you know, with all you do, like work as if you're working onto the Lord. Right. Um, and the reason why that's important is because it really is the Lord who is behind everything. 
And if we work as if we're working for people or we're working to receive, like solely to receive something, that is also when we experience burnout, right? Remember I said it before. I believe that when you don't know the purpose of something, that's when burnout starts to come because burnout is is very much mental as much as it is physical. When you are really, really enjoying something, like you wouldn't call it burnout when you're working that thing. Unless you are like you are over overworking, right? But if you're working in a in a system, you won't it, it will take a while, it'll take a very long time before you call that that thing burnout. Like before you say that you're experiencing burnout in that workplace because um you're enjoying it and you're understanding the purpose as to which you're doing it. And so work as if you're working onto the Lord. That way, like the mental part of the burnout is accounted for. Like mentally you're engaged because you're doing it as if you're doing it for the Lord who has provided everything for you. The Bible also says that, you know, thanksgiving is the will of God, right? Um, That is the will of God to give thanks. I believe that helps us so much because it reminds us that actually like everything that I have isn't mine. It reminds us that, wow, how fortunate am I to be in this position? How fortunate am I to be able to create this thing? How fortunate am I to be called by God? How fortunate am I to, um, you know, have a family or have friends or whatever it is that is a blessing to you, you know? Thanksgiving is so important because it, it resets our hearts. It resets our minds. It lets us um, take stock of what we're truly, truly being blessed by, you know? And so uh, work as if you're working onto the Lord and give thanks, man, in every situation. Um, there's a scripture here, Philippians 4, 11 to 13. It says, uh, not that I speak from need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with little, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In every, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthened me. It's funny because a lot of people use that scripture out of context, right? Where they say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But Paul was talking about contentment. And he was talking about, I can, I can be content in every situation through Christ who strengthens me. That was, that was what he was saying. When he said, I can do all things, the all things he was talking about was abounding in much and also abounding in little, right? You know, he also said um, in, this, in this same passage, I didn't, I didn't get it, but he just said that if I, have, if I have food and clothing, this is enough. So he realized that through Christ, he could have this heart posture and this mindset that if I've got food and clothes, oh, I'm so satisfied. I'm so content. I'm so good. Like we have to be really careful not to latch on to the principles of this world. And what, what the world is trying to teach us is what we are entitled to. It's a dangerous place to be. Because with entitlement comes pride. And with pride comes op- opposition from God. The Bible says that God opposes the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And so... <laughs> you're not going to be getting promoted by God anyway, whilst you're in a prideful state. And so who is going to be promoting you whilst you're in a prideful state? It's not going to be God, but it might be the enemy, but we'll, we'll get into that anyway. Um, I read another scripture. It says, uh, this is Philippians three, seven to eight. It says, um, but whatever things were gained to me, these things I've counted as loss because of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them mere rubbish so that I may gain Christ. This is what it looks like to fight entitlement. You set your eyes on Jesus. You remind yourself that I did not make myself, that I am only alive because God let me breathe. And even salvation, 
you remind yourself of your salvation. You know, you pray that prayer that David prayed, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That I don't walk around acting as if like, I deserve to be here and I deserve the life that I have and I deserve all my possessions. Like all that stuff that you worked hard for anyway, it was God who gave you the ability to work hard. Like some people literally don't have the ability that you do to work as hard as you work, to work out things the way you work out things. Like some people don't even have that inner drive to cultivate skills, but you do. And the reason why you do is because God gave you that grace. It is God who works in you and wills in you the, the desire and the power to do these things, to do what pleases him, you know, to, to work in the world, to produce things that are of good value. It's not your own. It ain't your own, your own doing, man. And uh, that is what we kind of need to learn in this generation, definitely. Uh, Psalms 84 verses 10 to 12, it says, uh, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity. Lord of armies, blessed is the person who trusts in you. You know, some uh, translations say, I would rather be a doorkeeper <laughs> for the house of the Lord than live in the tent of wicked people. And it's so true. It's a beautiful, beautiful heart posture. Beautiful heart posture. That, you know what? Number one, God is better than anything this life can offer. Number two, God owns better resources than we can get in this life. And so... Yeah, it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of God than it is to, you know, sit at the table with people, you know, who act so entitled and, you know, just act as if everything that they have is by their own merits and by their own strength, right? And that they deserve promotion <laughs> every step of the way, rather than being grateful for promotions being grateful for the work they have, being grateful for the skills that they've been able to cultivate and the person that they've been able to become on their journey. You know, um, I love David's mindset in, in that scripture, right? Um, there's a scri another scripture here. This is uh, Luke 16, 10 to 12. It says this, the one who is faithful in very little uh, is also faithful in much. And the one who is unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, if you have been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true wealth to you? And if you have been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? Right. And also, I'll even read that again because I don't want to get that wrong. The last one. And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you? you that which is your own jesus is essentially saying here like if you can't even be trusted with another person's vision and that might look like working in someone's company it might look like serving other people with your gifts it might look like the creative projects that you do where you have to go the extra mile to like you know please your client right it might look like the ministry that you serve in right and going the extra mile to serve the house as best as you can it might look like serving your pastors it might look like um praying for people it might do you know what i mean it might look like counseling people all of these things like if you're faithful in those things god will make you faithful over much more right but if you're unfaithful in those things he's not going to make you more he's not going to give you give you more you know but in this generation, it's, it's, it's interesting. We, we focus more on the more than we focus on the faithfulness. Like, our job is to be as faithful as we can with whatever is that, you know, whatever it is that is in our hands. Because that's what we could control. And we let God control the rest. We let God promote us. We let God uh, push us forward. We let God expose our lives more to other people. 
and you know we let god reward us for our hard work but this entitled mentality that we have in the world today of no i've done this thing so therefore i'm entitled to this thing i'm getting it i'm getting it it's like sometimes if we're honest like you haven't even been faithful for that long man what some people you you've been faithful at a job for about like six months and you're like i want a promotion or i want a pay rise and it's like what like you haven't <laughs> you haven't been faithful for long and you're you're more worried about the pay rise than your faithfulness or about your patience right which is a fruit of the spirit obviously i'm 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 not speaking to those in the world right you may not understand what i'm saying but i'm speaking to those of us who are in the kingdom and you have the holy spirit like the fruit of the spirit is patience and faithfulness so god may have you being faithful in a place for a lot longer than you want to but it's to produce in you the fruit of christ and god says that hey like if you're humble in that don't worry i will give you grace and i will exalt you right but we have to be careful because with that mindset the enemy knows like the enemy knows man with that mindset if we're not careful the enemy will be the one who gives us things to promote us and with whatever the enemy gives to you it may look good but it always takes away something that is godly it always takes away something that is actually necessary to your walk right and that leads me on to this first john 2 15 17 do not love the world nor the things of the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the boastful pride of life is not from the father but is from the world the world is passing away and also its lusts but the one who does the will of god continues to live for ever now all of those different things that were listed right uh, you got the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life those three things were the three wilderness temptations that the devil tempted jesus with right he said turn this stone into bread that's the lust of the flesh if like if you're the son of god turn it into bread lust of the flesh um if you bow down and worship me i'll give you all of these kingdoms that is the um lust of the eyes right lust of the eyes and then he says hey jump off of this mountain because the angels will catch you if you're, if you're the son of god the angels will catch you right that is the pride of life right the pride of him being the son of god the lust of the flesh in the sense of turning this stone into bread even though jesus is supposed to be fasting <laughs> during that time and then you've got the um so i said lust of the eyes i had pride of life and i said um no yeah lust of the eyes i didn't say lust of the the last of the eyes example right is yeah i will you know i will give you all of these kingdoms he's showing him all these kingdoms all, all these beautiful things but jesus knows that no i already own those things they're already mine <laughs> like my father already owns those things ultimately so no i'm gonna go through this testing and eventually i'm gonna have those things anyway right which is patience and faithfulness to the will of god faithfulness to the will of god and the reason why I say that is because, look, like we have to be weary that <clears throat> if we're being handed, handed things without process and without humility, it might not be God. Like, I just want you to check yourself. Really look at your life, right? The things that you have been promoted in or given, have they drawn you nearer to God or have they taken you away from him? Because that's really the barometer. We know that when God promotes us, he doesn't add sorrow. You know, he doesn't add terrible things to us. God always processes us for a certain amount of time so that as we grow, um, we're able to actually maintain what he's giving us. You know, God is a good father. God is not a, um, a genie, <laughs> right? He's a father. And so he will process to make sure that you can handle the promise, man. That you can handle what it is that he's got to give to you. Whereas the devil, the devil doesn't care. The devil wants you to fail. And so what the devil will do is he will give you amazing things. He will give you sweet things. He will give you all of these opportunities that are coming from nowhere. That take you away from church. 
take you away from community, take you away from quiet time, take you away from Bible study, take you away from communion with the Lord. But yet you're earning more money, you know, your notoriety is increasing, your fame is increasing. But because you're not having that internal um, building with God, the devil is just waiting for that one day where you will crash. That one day where you'll be involved in a scandal. That one day, you know what I mean? Where everything will come crashing down because you've no, you, you, you neglected God. You neglected that internal uh, relationship with God that keeps us from doing those things that will destroy, you know, our name and destroy all the things that we've built. This is why God wants to build us slowly. And this is why entitlement and self-promotion in this generation is such a dangerous thing. So clearly we're seeing that nothing is free. <laughs> and also not all promotions come from God, right? Like everything has a trade-off. If you get promoted by God, the trade-off is that you have to be patient. And the trade-off is that you have to be humble. And the trade-off is that you have to go through process, right? Which isn't, doesn't feel nice at the time, but it is, it is better for you in the long run. Whereas when you're promoted by the enemy, we see that the trade-off is God. The trade-off is intimacy with God. <laughs> the trade-off is identity. Oh, the trade-off is godly good things. The trade-off is that eventually you're probably going to have a have a hard time. You're probably going to crash and burn at some point. Psalms um 75 4 to 7. It says, I said to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with insolent pride. For not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the desert comes exaltation or comes promotion. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. So we see that there's two, there's two kinds of promotion here. There's one, a promotion that comes from God. And then there's a promotion that comes from the enemy. Proverbs 10 verse 22. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Man, we see once again, I guess the flip side of that would be that the enemy can bring blessing your way, but it can add sorrow to your life. Because look, a blessing outside of purpose or a blessing outside of process is a curse, man. I'm sure you've seen it in your own life. I've seen it in my life when you get something prematurely and you're not able to handle it. Like it becomes more of a burden to your life. It's no, it's no longer a blessing. It's a curse, right? Or you get something prematurely and actually it, it, it ruins your character or it, or, it, or it shows your character, I should say, right? Because you haven't been processed to receive that thing. And so it shows you who you really are shows you your character. It shows you how much patience you don't actually have. It shows you how rude you are. It shows you how, like, just terrible <laughs> you are as a, as a human being. And God wants you to avoid all of that. God wants us to avoid all of that. That's why God sets us in process. That's why God says, hey, be humble. God says, hey, be patient. Wait, like, I've got good things for you. Yeah, but, but you can't be entitled. I made you. I'm the one who made you. I gave you all these resources. I gave you your abilities. But you being entitled, it speeds you up. And if it speeds you up, you will receive promotion from the enemy and not from me. And the enemy is trying to destroy you with promotion. The Bible says that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. And oftentimes, having abundant life looks like more patience it looks like more faithfulness it looks like getting the right things at the right time and trusting that god will take care of you in the interim even in the midst of this crazy financial pressure that's happening like god will take care of you god takes care of his children man he takes care of his children as the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all these things that everyone else is worrying about or feeling entitled to will be given to you freely you'll have it freely 
you know so that's my encouragement to you um as well so yeah man that's been the podcast episode today um you know i really want us to take heed uh turn away from being entitled turn away from self-promotion let god promote you um and give thanks man give thanks for what you have give thanks for um all that god has given you like everything you have all of your abilities if not for god like if not for god seeing you through hard times even if you didn't even notice that he was seeing you through hard times he was <laughs> i'm telling you uh, i'm telling you the enemy's plan is to kill still and destroy you if there is anything in your life that is still afloat if there is anything in your life that is still good if there is anything in your life that is still blessed it's because the lord is keeping those parts of you man so yeah let's turn to the lord let's continue to grow as unboxed called and created people um let's turn away from entitlement let's turn towards gratitude and humility and god will promote you in his time and that promotion will give you blessings riches and add no sorrow to your life peace man listen man it doesn't have to be more money more problems yeah it can be it can be more blessings more blessings <laughs> okay bye hey Iman here i just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented um, or given a review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time. <laughs>